I had messages waiting to be played. You have three messages. Hey, Collard, it's me, your favorite editor. Ah, uh, guess what? I'm gonna give you a second chance. I need somebody to write the TV column. Pays lousy, so what's new? If you're interested, drop by the office. In fact, drop by the office anyway. We have to talk, Nico. That story of yours I spiked. It won't go away. You've made some dangerous enemies out there. Hey, Nico, it's your old pal. I mean, your new pal, George. Whoa, Ireland. <laughs> it's a whole different country. And I got some amazing news for you. Gem of a story, in fact. Oh, oh, gotta go. Yeah, fella here's got a drink lined up for me. See you tomorrow, Nico. Schlonsha. Yep, only here for a day and I'm speaking the lingo like a local. Mademoiselle Coulard, this is Amel de Carchon. I wanted to thank you for being so understanding when... Come to lunch, why don't you? Tomorrow. I might have more news. There's a Monsieur Merlon coming to see me this evening. He says he knows why Pierre was murdered. In fact, he'll be here shortly. I shall let you know what he says. Goodbye, dear girl. Till tomorrow. Merlin? Oh, my God. Merlin's the killer. I'd better get over there and mourn her now. When it came to being two-faced, Imelda was up there with the best. I owed her nothing, but I couldn't just let her die. I arrived to find the Palais Royal courtyard deserted. I only hoped that I'd beaten the assassin here. I had to warn Imelda before it was too late. I unhooked the first wire. I released the second wire. Even with both wires removed, the statue remained upright. If I could deconstruct this, I could deconstruct anything. My God, I'm too late. Imelda. Oh no. Nico? Don't worry, you're going to be all right. You know that isn't true. It was Merlin, wasn't it? Dressed as a cavalier. Absurd. You came to warn me, didn't you? I must be crazy. Let me see you, Nico. All this time you were just using me. Which one is the real Imelda? You are an extraordinary girl. Thierry would have been so proud of you. You didn't know my father. So like him. Something about the eyes. I wish we'd had time to get to know each other. 
she was gone. She cheated me, lied to me, used me. But why? Even in death, Imelda looked the same. Beautiful, inscrutable. The Ice Queen alone in her ice palace. I opened it. Inside was a tiny gold key. I took the key. I had to leave. I knew I could never return. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. I took out the key. I couldn't believe it. Imelda's key opened my father's box. I dreaded what I was going to find inside. It was a photograph of Imelda. But why here? In my father's box? I felt as if a black hole had swallowed me up. Imelda and Carchon grinning. While behind them a village was being razed to the ground. Its people butchered. And there, next to them, staring out at me across the years, my own father. There was a letter. I feared there was even worse to come. Hotel Saint Georges, Algiers, Friday. My darling Thierry, by the time you read this, you'll be safely out of Africa. You need not fear. Pierre and the organization do not know who you are really working for, or about us. Did you think I would betray you? I could not. You wanted me to leave him, but I don't have your courage. I know too much of what has been going on here. They would find me and they would kill us both. Enjoy your life in Paris, Thierry. Your life of honor, of patriotic duty. Do they give medals to spies? No, they'll just give you a funny job in an embassy somewhere. I could never share that with you. Imagine me, a diplomat's wife. So I must stay here with Pierre, the two of us bound together by what we have done to this country. Au revoir, my love. You will be in my heart until I die. Imelda. Suddenly everything made sense. My father had been working undercover for the government. He was one of the good guys after all. He and Imelda must have fallen in love. She'd found out who he really was, so he had to leave. It had broken her heart, but she had never revealed it to anyone. I knew I couldn't either. Whatever he was doing, he'd had good reason to keep it secret. I decided I would respect that and tell nobody. I knew it was George. For a moment I was tempted to pretend that I was out, or ask him to go away and come back later. But then... Come in. Hello, George. So, where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snow? Hardly. He was dead. Then Leary woke me in the middle of the night to help bail out the cellar. The cellar was flooded? Yeah. Some idiot had left the faucet running. And you say Pigram has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. Pigram's gem? 
The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, he's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. Let's take another look at the manuscript. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. Between them is a gem supported by a tripod. There's a guy working on a loom. Look there, two guys on the same horse. A knight with a crystal ball. The knight scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. I can't sit here all day, much as I'd like to. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobineau at the Kron Museum. And why don't you see if Rosso has heard anything? Okay. Anything else I can do for you while I'm out? Shopping, a trip to the laundromat? Just take care of yourself. I so much wanted to talk to George about everything that had happened, but I knew I never could. My father's connection to Africa would have to remain a secret forever. His bravery would be known only to the government and to me. Revealing it would just damage his memory. People would take the story and twist it. Before long, he would be the villain and Carchon would be the hero. I know how they do that. I'm a journalist. <laughs> 